Hi, my name's Antonia. This is Universally Me. First, please subscribe to my channel. If you like my videos, hit the thumbs up and also check out my Patreon, which is linked in the information below. Something that is often overlooked or forgotten these days when we think about the start of the film industry is the role that women played in it. And it's hard to imagine because today there are so few opportunities of substance for women, but in the early days, women actually wrote quite a few serials and full-length features, and it really wasn't unheard of for them to direct, produce, or edit films as well. This was certainly true at Universal under Carl Lemley, and there's one woman whose name I see time and time again in reading about the early days of the studio and the film industry in general. She was the first female mayor of Universal City, and Carl Lemley once called her his best man on the lot. Her name was Lois Weber. Lois Weber was at one time a name as well known and esteemed as Cecil B. DeMille or D.W. Griffith. She wrote, directed, produced, she pioneered filming techniques, she starred in tons of films, and she really pushed the boundaries too when it came to subject matter. But still, even by the time that she died, she was already pretty much forgotten. Lois Weber was born Florence Lois Weber to George and Tilly Weber on June 13th, 1879 in Allegheny City, Pennsylvania. She had two siblings and she really just grew up in a small, happy little middle-class Christian family. It sounds like she was pretty brilliant right from the start. She was always writing stories as a little kid. She loved to sing in her church and she was a pretty brilliant pianist. It's interesting because it definitely seems like there were some conflicting values at play while she was growing up. Her parents really encouraged her creativity and, and that was clearly a big passion of hers, but theater was still considered sort of a dirty profession at the time. There's even a story where apparently she wasn't allowed to perform at church once because they knew that she performed in the theater. In her spare time, in order to make up for her sinful lifestyle, she did a lot of missionary work and she would perform in prisons and hospitals. In 1904, when she was 24 years old, she met and married Philip Smalley, who was a stage manager. He proposed in three days, and they were married in 30. They began traveling on the road together, and Lois really used this time to start developing scenarios, and she started selling a lot pretty quickly. By 1907, they were being billed as the Smalleys, acting in projects together mostly that Lois had written herself. They started working with companies like Galmans and the Rex Film Company, which eventually merged with Universal, and that's how they made it out to California. In addition to acting and writing, she also took on other roles including editing, directing, producing, costume design, set design. She was really doing it all. According to Photoplay, at one point when she had her own production company, she negotiated such a big distribution deal for herself that she was literally the highest paid director in Hollywood. Lois's films tended to be very real. She wanted the characters to be pretty much just how you would experience them if you ran into them in the real world. And some people were still figuring out the impact that film could have on society, but Lois sort of had that figured out. So in films like Hypocrites, Where Are My Children, or The Hand That Rocks the Cradle, she tackled major issues like abortion, birth control, poverty, divorce, pretty legit issues, especially when you remember that this is like 1915 to 1920. And those years were really the height of her career. In 1922, Lois Weber and Philip Smalley divorced, and around the same time, Lois's film career started slowing down a bit. Some people try to attribute this to the idea that maybe her husband had a hand in her career, but I don't really see that as being the case. In general, film studios were getting bigger and more powerful, and many of them just started shutting women out of opportunities. And additionally, after World War I ended, people really started just wanting to go to the movies for amusement, not to feel educated or lectured to, and Lois wasn't really willing to back down from her style of filmmaking. She did make a few more films for Universal, however, and in 1925, she contributed to a re-edit of The Phantom of the Opera. Around the same time, she got remarried to a retired army officer named Harry Gantz. Her last few years in the 30s seem tough. She really wasn't given great film opportunities. She got divorced again. She was managing a few properties around LA, but she died of a bleeding ulcer in 1939 at age 60. And it really seems like she had hardly anything to her name and she really didn't get any recognition when she died. Lois Weber was the first woman to direct a full-length feature film. 
She pioneered shooting techniques like shooting on location, using unique angles, and the split screen. She had her own production company. She was very outspoken about the lack of opportunities for women, and she made it a point to mentor other women in the industry as well. It's a shame that the film industry seemed so ready to forget her and that we've basically erased her from history. I hope this video inspires you to learn more about the impact that Lois Weber had on film and also to seek out other female film pioneers. It's also interesting to see how some of the struggles that she faced, we're still facing now, 100 years later. Please leave any comments below. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Antonia Carlotta. Check out my Patreon, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks. Bye.